Isaiah 54. <laughs> From verse act. Taught elephant. Are you there? Take your Bibles, everyone. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Today I want to talk to you and tell you. Now God was of me welcome. Ages. I want to tell someone that God is capable and far more able to turn those evil stones that the enemy has thrown against you into stepping stones. Uh, somebody didn't understand me. I said, I want to tell someone today that every evil stone that the enemy has thrown against your destiny, God is able and far more capable to turn those evil stones into stepping stones so you stand upon them and jump into victory. So you stand upon those stones and move into your success. So you stand upon those stones and excel in life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. Amen. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Verse 10 says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but what to rest the earth and make it bring forth a bad, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And I always tell you that God always gives seed to the one who is ready to sow. Okay. And the one who, when you get, you will eat. He will give you bread. So when you take, you eat. Amen. Amen. That is for another time. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Now listen to verse 11 very well. So shall my word be that proceeds, that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall do what? Accomplish that which I God, that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Hallelujah. Amen. God he says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His plans are not what you intend for yourself. And he says as the rain comes down on earth and it does not return but it waters the ground. It waters the earth and it brings seed to the one who will sow and bread to the one who will want to eat. So words that comes out of God's mouth. So whatever God have spoken concerning you. So whatever God have used his servants to say into your life. So those words will never return to him. Until those words have come to pass. I don't know if God has spoken to you about something. I don't know if God's word has gone ahead of you. I don't know if God has said something to you. But I am sure I've been sent by God to tell you that whatever God has spoken about you, whatever God has spoken to you, I have been sent by God to tell you that those words, if they have not come to pass, you don't have to cry, you don't have to get worried. If they have not come to pass, you 
don't have to feel that they will not come to pass because they are still in the pipeline. It has never returned to God. It will surely come to you. It will surely happen. It will surely happen. It will surely happen. Amen. Verse 11 says, But it shall accomplish that which I please. I don't know if you understand that. Those words, Deze what God wants, wat God wil, the way God wants it, God that is how it's going to happen. That is what shall happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somewhere in the book of Psalm 37, it says God's ways are perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's ways are right. God's ways are God's perfect. God's ways are perfect. They are good. Hallelujah. Amen. God's ways, they are not crooked. God's ways are not crooked. His ways are okay. God's ways are good. I remember the other day that he said in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Hey, child of God. God says, I know what I have been planning for you. That hij weet wat hij voor u aan het I know what I have been stuck for you. Ik weet wat ik voor u heb. They are thoughts of good, not of evil. And surely I will give you an expectant end. Your ending will not be disgrace. Your ending will not be shame. Your ending will be great. Your ending will be good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am talking about God turning your evil stones into stepping stones. Ik heb het over God dat Hij u slechte stenen in stenen moet veranderen waar u op kunt staan. When I was preparing this message, I was telling myself that sometimes we worry ourselves too much. Soms maken we onszelf te veel zorgen. In thinking and finding reasons why some things are happening. We denken en proberen redenen te vinden waarom het gaat. I tell you, I've told myself that if I think and think and think, I cannot add anything to it. Ik kan er niets aan toevoegen. The best thing to do is to trust Him. Now listen to me. Tell somebody, trust God. Don't worry yourself to think. Disturb your mind. Tell somebody, keep trusting God. Amen. I'm praying I'll get to you. If the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says what? The secret things. They belong to who? That makes him God. You think if God is to to make you understand everything that is happening to you. Then he, he ceases to be God. Because you know it all. So sometimes he has to keep some away from you. Then he becomes God. So when you get so much confused, you will always run to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What am I saying? I'm trying to tell someone that that evil stone will not put you down. I'm trying to say that that evil stone will not keep you down. It will not put you down and it will not keep you down. That evil stone is going to be turned into a stepping stone. Hallelujah. That evil stone if you keep trusting God, you will step on that stone and your destiny will move forward. I remember some time ago in the book of First Samuel chapter 16, chapter 9, from verse 1. I want to go a bit faster. When you go, you can read. First Samuel. Samuel, and from verse 1. Hoofdstuk 9 vanaf vers 1. There's this man. And there's a man. By then, Israel. Hebrew time. Were disturbing Prophet Samuel. 
Ik wat een kind, wat een kind, wat een kind. Because all the cities around are king. And they don't have. So they wanted a king. And God said, Samuel, I want to direct you as to how to get a king for your people. Ik wil jullie leiden hoe jullie aan een koning kunnen krijgen, uh, kunnen komen. And Bible says, they were there. And the Bible When this man called Kish, Kish, to man Kish, is the father of the first king of Israel called Saul. Hij is de vader van de eerste koning van Israël. Is as God missing? Hallelujah. Amen. And Saul was supposed to. Go with a servant to look for the house. Hallelujah. Amen. And the one looking for it, they looked for it, they looked for it. They did all the time, they couldn't find it. Hallelujah. They were disturbed. And so, Saul said, Can't we find any prophet around? We go to him for him to tell us where the the ass can be found. And to cut long story short, they went to Prophet Samuel. Hallelujah. Amen. And when they go to Prophet Samuel. Then, Bible says, God touch the destiny of Saul. He changed it. Why am I using this as an example? Trouble came to the house. As God missing, Saul had to go look for it. He did all he can. He couldn't find it. He walked to a prophet. And his destiny was affected. Example number one. I'll come in. I'll come there again. Let's look at another gentleman. Called Joseph. Joseph. God wanted to make him a great person. Joseph, we all know, had a very good destiny. He even saw it in dreams. But after getting the dream, God, we don't know what happened. But his brothers hated him. They, they tried to kill him. They sent him to a strange land. I am sure Joseph, it will get to a time he will not forget whatever dream he had. And he will tell himself that whatever happens to me, it's okay. I'll accept it like that. Because from the strange land, the devil had to bring in another evil woman to, to tempt him and throw him into prison. But that evil stone, that evil stone, that evil stone was turned into a stepping stone. Can I tell you something? That if Joseph was not thrown into prison, He wouldn't have climbed that palace. He wouldn't have climbed up to be a prime minister. Hallelujah. And so God turned that evil stone into a stepping stone. If the ass of, of Saul's father didn't get missing, for Saul to go look for it, like there is no way the path of Saul and Samuel will cross. Can I, can I tell you something? Does it mean that God knows the reason why you are going through that challenge? He knows why some things are delayed in your life. He knows why you have not received some things as yet. He has a reason and he has a purpose. He is looking at you and preparing you because he has something great for you in the future. And he wants to prepare you. He wants to mature you. He wants that thing to be a stepping stone so you can stand upon it and get to that destiny he wants you to be into. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want somebody to get up and shake yourself. Just shake yourself. Say, I'm not worried. 
Shake yourself and say, I'm not worried. Say, I'm not bothered. Say, I will move forward. Say, whatever happens, I will never get worried. I will keep trusting God. Take Do you know that? David. Nobody knows him. When he was taking care of his father's sheep. Nobody knows him. But by design and by God's own design, David was supposed to be the next king of Israel. He was supposed to go into the throne. I keep saying this that I'm sure once a while when he goes to the he goes to take care of the fathership. He, he will grumble and say, All my brothers are home. I'm doing it alone. And they've even forgotten me. They don't even think about me. I have to do this every time. Hallelujah. And sometimes he will see wild animals and they will come around and he will be alone in the wilderness playing his harp alone in the wilderness his brothers will be home and during all the good TVs and the radio his brothers will be home eating the good food but David will be in the wilderness alone in the evening he has to take them back in the morning he takes them to the wilderness he was there alone and he, he, I'm sure there will be a time he will say, ah, my father don't like me. My parents don't like me. They have left me alone to handle it. But God knows how to turn that thing into a stepping stone. Do you know that if David did not learn how to kill wild animals, he would not be able to face Goliath. So God had to claim David in the wilderness. So David would not fear if you are tall and big. He would not fear you. So when he saw Goliath, he said, this thing is too small for me. I've seen wild animals who are bigger than this. I'm able to stand them. I will not be afraid of this man. I will be able to stand him. I know how to throw my sling and the stone will be directed to a particular spot on the, on the body of this man and it will discipline him. I will not be afraid of him. And you know what? God will have to use Goliath to announce the, the presence of David because nobody knows David anywhere. So David had to do something so people will know who he is. So people will know there's somebody called David. I came to tell you that don't worry about what you are going through. I came to tell you that don't cry about what you are going through. Don't be so disturbed about it because God will be using it as a stepping stone. God will be using it for you to stand upon because he has a place for you. He has a destiny for you. He has to somewhere for you to stand in life and he has to allow you to go through it so when you get there you'll be able to handle it Amen. hallelujah Amen. Joseph God knows that he has to be to climb the throne Amen. Amen and there is no way anyone could know Joseph if Joseph was still in the, in the house of Potiphar, no one who know Joseph can interpret dreams from the palace. Am I talking to someone? No one will know. Because in the house of Potiphar, Joseph was not interpreting dreams. He was doing houseboy job. So no one could know he can interpret dreams. So God has to bring trouble to pull Joseph from the house of Potiphar, throw him into prison, so he will go and interpret dreams. So that the king will know that truly there's someone 
who can interpret dreams. I came to tell you that that thing that is worrying you, that thing that has been a problem, that thing that has been disturbing you so much, don't worry about it. Just keep trusting who? God. As I keep you up, trusting God, keep your faith high, believe in Him, continue to pray, because you will lose it. You will stand upon it, and you will turn to where he wants to take you. In the name of Jesus, a round of applause, a round of applause. Hallelujah. You may know this man's story. Judges chapter 11. This is not one called Jephthah. I know his story. Judges 11. Let's just read a few portions just for you to get, get it. I'll tell you the rest of the story. Verse 1. Can we read together? One go. Gileadite was what? And he was. And begat. Verse 2. And who? Gilead's wife. And his. Grew up, thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Oh, read, read with him, and said unto him, In our father's house, the son of. Hallelujah. Some of you know this story. Jephthah! He was the first son of his father. I was the first son of his father. From a different woman. From an other vrouw. The woman was a prostitute. Vrouw was a prostitute. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know whether he went to red light. <laughs> and after going to red light, <laughs> the woman took his address. <laughs> and then he was home, and the woman came and said, <laughs> "Mr. Man, what you came to do that day?" You didn't do it well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then Jephthah's father brought forth other children. Jephthah's father brought And when they all grew up, and they got to know that their elder brother has a different mother, and the mother was a harlot. He said, no, we cannot share property with a prostitute son. We have to leave this house. Amen. And they threw him out of the house. How I wish we read for you to get certain points. Let me, let, me, let me try and read a bit fast. Let's go, let's go. Verse 3. Quickly. I read to somewhere about ten there about. Then Joseph fled from sorry, and Jephthah fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Thor. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Thor. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Hallelujah. Amen. They threw Jephthah out. And Jephthah had to leave the house and get himself, get into, how do you call it, um, 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 vagabonds. Eh? How do you call, call them? Kobolo. Kobolo. Not pagans. Outcast, truants, truants, truants. Who are the Hallelujah. People who don't have good training. Mensen die niet goed getraind zijn. He went there to mix up with them. To learn how to to live hard. People who do. Hallelujah. Amen. So. Jephthah, they knew as for Jephthah, this is his company. And one time, the children of Ammon decided to come make war with Israel. 
Now they're looking for someone who can who can fight. They went to Jephthah. So he not Jephthah too. God knows God, that Jephthah has to be a leader. But if he doesn't say, go out to learn how to fight, that position will not come to him. And so he has to throw him out of the house. I don't know what you are going through now, but I'm sure God has sent him to tell you that in every situation, give thanks and keep believing and trusting God because he will use that situation to bless you. He will use that situation as a stepping stone and he will stand upon that situation and he will move you into that destiny of yours. Hallelujah. Finally, if you read on, they have to make Jephthah their leader because that was what he told them. He said, if you want me to go and fight, then make me the leader of Israel. They have to, they have to agree and make him a leader. And he led them. Only he took a wrong, he made a, a vow which wasn't good. Hallelujah. Amen. But he became a leader. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me end by asking myself. I keep asking myself. God knows that Moses is going to take and lead the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. Why is he that? When Moses has to come into this world, when he has to be born, he was born at a time that a decree has been made that every male child that will be born should be killed. Why? Why? Have you thought about it? That this guy, God knows that this guy is supposed to lead his people out of bondage. And the time and the era that he was about to be born, there is a decree that every male child that is going to be born or that will be born should be king. Why should he be born around that time? Because that boy should go into the palace of the Egyptians to learn some things there. So don't have to change situations and make things difficult and make things hard and make it so hard. Make it so hard. Hard. Pull the boy from the Israelites and move him into the palace of, 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 the, of, the, of, of Pharaoh so you will go and learn some things before you come back to them. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are going through, but I came to tell you that don't cry. Keep trusting God. Tell somebody, keep trusting God. Say, keep trusting God. Say, keep trusting God. Say, keep trusting God. In every situation, give thanks and trust Him. Because he will use that situation. If only if you only you have faith and you stand firm, he will use that same situation as a stepping stone and he will lift you and move you into that destiny. Let me end here. Let me end here. Hallelujah. Let me end here. Be on your feet.